Sub sub supplementary question, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. How can the minister possibly tell this House that she has cut for a large group of young people and, and some older people the TIA, but that's not a cut? The Honourable Mr. Paula Bennett. Speaker, uh, what's happened is we changed the criteria. So we had huge concerns. Well, wake up, it was done more than two years ago. So what we did was change the criteria because we had so many concerns for those women in particular who were not even achieving to a level two of, uh, of, of attainment and education attainment. And I am proud to say that we are putting more money into supporting those people and those women into work, into training, and I'm proud of that record. Supplementary question, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. When Before I call the member, uh, there's no way I can assist members if the, if the minister doesn't answer the question because I can't possibly hear it. So I just say to members, it is one of their colleagues asking these questions, and it's, it's discourteous to their own colleague to make such a high level of interjection. The Honourable Trevor Mallard, supplementary question. Mr. Mr Speaker, how can she justify cutting the very benefit that allowed her to get her qualifications, and how can that not be characterised as hypocritical? Oh, order, order. No, no. The, it's, there's a long practice in this place that members can't be accused of being hypocritical, and to allude to it that way, I think, is a is a is an unreasonable construction. I accept that it's a little different from directly accusing the member of being hypocritical, but I think I invite the member to reword that question to avoid, to avoid that, uh, that, that possible slight on, on the minister. I invite the member to reword his question. Supplementary question. In light of the fact that the member used the TIA to get her qualification, can she elucidate to the House whether in the same circumstances she would be eligible now, or is it just another case of pulling the ladder up after she's climbed out and off the benefit? The uh, point of order, the Honourable Chris Finlayson. Order, a point of order has been called. Mr. The Honourable Chris Finlayson. Mr Speaker, the Minister's not responsible for the policies of an earlier administration, which is a, a fundamental a limb of the first part of that inept question. I'll hear the Honourable Trevor Mallard Mr. briefly. Mr Speaker, she is absolutely responsible for the policy change which changed it from the criteria that she took advantage of in the past. Order. Uh, if I recollect the, cor the question correctly, it asked whether the Minister would have qualified given the, ch the criteria she has changed. And so it is not whether she would have qualified under the previous uh, government's a, a previous government's administration. It's would she have qualified given the changes made by by, this, by, by the minister herself. And and on that basis, I believe the question should not be ruled out on the on the grounds that the acting leader of the house has has raised. I believe I should allow the allow the question. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, Mr Speaker, we are looking at a very different education system and tertiary system now than we were in 1994. And the opposite side may not think that things order, have changed. Order, I apologise to the Minister. Now, either the Labour Party takes the questions of its colleague seriously or it doesn't. And I have just treated the question with some seriousness. Uh, the acting leader of the House argued it was out of order. I did not take that advice. I allowed the question. Maybe I made a mistake. If Labour thinks the question is so uh, worthless as to keep interjecting like that, maybe I did make a mistake. But I made the decision, and I've invited the minister to. I've asked the minister to answer the question, and I think it should be treated with some respect. The Honourable Paula Bennett. So, Mr. Speaker, my point is that things have changed since 1994. The education system and the tertiary system have changed. Those young women and men actually have more access to uh, interest-free student loans. They get more childcare assistance than they ever have. They are far better off if they are in tertiary study now than they certainly were in the early 90s when I was there. So that member may not think that times have changed in the 30 years or whatever it is since he was in tertiary training, but actually it has. So if one went back 40 years and said they would never ever make a change to a system as a minister because of something they did or did not get, then what a ridiculous position that would be in. So, 
That is the situation as it stands. Wait. Point of order. Point of order. The Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr. Point Speaker, order. it was a it was it was a long answer. It was commendable for the information it gave, but it did not tell us the answer to the question, and that was she, she said things have changed, but the minister did not indicate to the house whether or not, uh, under the circumstances order. she had previously, she order. would now. Order. It was my understanding from the minister's answer she was indicating she may not. Uh, qualify under the current uh, uh, criteria, and uh, uh, if I'm wrong on that, the minister will certainly correct me. Mr. Speaker, my point was that you can't compare now to what it was in 1994. It is a completely different system, both in tertiary and education and both in the welfare system. So I am not going to take a hypothetical situation of, uh, I mean, as, I, as my point was, if Trevor Mallard was right now going to study at university, oh, no, order, would he receive no, order, the same? Order, 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 order. I'm on my feet. And we're not going to go any further with this question. Question number two, Tim McIndoe. 